figure one. There are 60 dots here, and those, are, those represent the data of 60 different women. When I started at Penn, I was a psych graduate student and we were studying about the autonomic nervous system. Have you all had some exposure to sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system? I had an idea, and I got a professor in the psychology department to sign on, that I would collect data of women's menstrual cycles because I knew about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Have you all heard about that? Has anybody heard about Heisenberg? He said that whenever you go to measure something, the tool you use to measure alters the thing you're measuring so that what you think you've learned may be an artifact of the tool. It may not be real. And I thought, well, if women would keep a record on a calendar of when they menstruated, uh, I didn't think there would be too much intrusion into their cycle. And I figured I was going to find out that the women who were more nervous had one kind of cycle and the women who were more calm had another, and I was wrong. But at the last minute, listening to what was happening with the rat sex studies that I don't have time to tell you about, but they were really interesting. I had this idea and I asked the research assistants who were working with me, ask your student to put on her calendar what her assessment is of her pattern of behavior for coitus, for intercourse. She's never had intercourse during the 14 weeks that they've been keeping records. She's had some sporadic or she never misses a week. She's weekly. When we plotted that data, the, tw the 60 people came out, the 60 dots, that all the weeklies were close to the 29 and a half day cycle length. And you may imagine why I brought up the moon in the beginning and that it says its cycle. It turns out a 29 and a half day cycle is the most fertile cycle a woman can have. Those women who menstruate at 20, every 29 and a half days are 98% of them have a fertile cycle that time. The further away she goes from that cycle length, whether shorter or longer, the less likely that cycle is fertile, meaning should there be sperm provided at the right time, she's not likely to get pregnant. Sperm will live in the fallopian tube for three days. The egg lives about six hours. So the sperm has to be waiting just like men have to wait for women. It's the nature of nature. It's the basic biology. The data here showed something startling and my faculty in psychology said that I didn't belong in the psychology department. I belonged in the biology department and they were correct. I went to the biology department and was very fortunate to have wonderful mentors there. To replicate this study, not retrospectively asking people at the end of a study, but to see what would happen if they kept records of their, their cycles, that's when they bled, and a cycle length, let me explain that to you. A woman who gets her period starts bleeding on January 1st and then starts bleeding on January 30th, has a 29-day cycle. There were 29 days till the next cycle started. Doesn't matter if she bleeds for three days, five days, 10 days. The cycle length is defined by day one. How many days is it to the next day one? And that's what the, we really had accurate data on the cycle length, we just didn't have accurate data on the behavior. The next one shows you the data collected a year later of a very large number, and I, can we get to the caption? Is it 248 women? Yes, that's 248 women. Now you may wonder why are there so few that meet the criteria of weekly, because do you see how few there are that are weekly compared to sporadic women and never women? And that's because a condition for being in this study was they weren't taking the oral contraceptive and nor wearing an IUD. So sexually active women would be most likely to be preempted from being in this study. We were asking about natural cycles. The, tr the triangles, I don't, can you see the triangles versus the, the circles from where you are? Uh, the triangles we asked is twice a week more profound in producing and associating. Right now we don't know what causes, which, what's the cause. Is the cycle length the cause of the behavior or is the behavior the cause of the cycle length? We can't tell yet. This is just an association. We have a clue that if we knew that the cycle length is around 29 days, we don't know what the behavior is. But if we know the behavior is, re is every week, we can predict there's gonna be no short cycles, two studies in a row, and just a few long cycles proportionally. Let's see where we go from here. Let's go to figure four. We asked, what about, is this effect, can she do it for herself? Would regular weekly masturbation do it? And the answer is no, it takes a partner. And 
You could go back and read that study and see it, but that's what that question was asking. Figure 5 showed the same pattern in, well, we have a bunch of different groups in Figure 5. If you go further down, there's the big group. It doesn't matter whether we looked at the first cycle, we took only one data point for each person, or the average cycle over the 14, cycle length over the 14 weeks, or the last cycle. We kept getting the same result. The same pattern kept emerging, which is that that cycle, people who have weekly behavior have cycles that are more fertile in length. That, that's all we knew then. 